Robert Janitz. He is a German painter living in New York usually, but he escaped to Mexico City. And we're gonna hear how the situation is there. And now we should be able in meeting him. No, he's not there. Okay, so maybe he's coming soon because there was some time different issues. And here we go, Robert, finally. Ta -da. Okay, and once he's in, I can switch off the comments, but I wonder. Hello, ah. Robert. Hi, hi. <laughs> sorry. So, um, good morning. Good morning. I mean, it's the afternoon. Now it really makes sense with 10 a.m. And how's it over there in Mexico City? Um, I have a good time. You know, it's um, the weather is amazing. And um, I ended up in a really nice house, which I, you know, I wasn't planning to stay here all of, um, you know, the last couple of weeks. But um, I'm happy here. Are you, stuck? And, uh, you didn't. You didn't intend to stay in Mexico. No, I intended to, but I was maybe traveling a bit more. You know, I was planning to travel to uh, Guatemala and to Guadalajara. I wanted oh, yeah. to meet up with um, Jose. Jose. Yeah, you know, this so, is, this Jose did this piece here. Jose Noé did it for Alicia. Ah, cool. Yeah. No, uh, I was talking about Jose Davila. Oh, Jose Davila. I thought you mean Jose de Noé. Uh, yeah. A, he's a great ceramicist from Guadalajara. He's a, a good friend of, of Jose Davila, who is this one here over there. But he's, he's not there right now. <laughs> anyway, right, right. Um, no, I saw... So... But you have a studio practice in, 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 in... Oh, cool. You see your painting in the back here. Uh... You have a studio practice, practice in... You have a studio in... Um, I have a studio and it's, um, the good thing is my studio is just, um, like five minutes walking down the street. So, you know, I don't need to take any public transportation. Are we in your um, studio now? No, this is actually my, uh, courtyard. Ah, uh, cool. Why you show us your courtyard? I don't know. No, I'm actually. <laughs> Can we I see it? <laughs> I you want to see it? Yeah, sure. Oh, but I thought we're gonna see some. We're gonna see some some work. I have some work over in the other room. I can show you. Please. So I'm gonna go over there. And tell us how is the health situation in in Mexico? I mean, how is the whole Corona um, um, frontier? The the whole Mexican approach was different. It was more. Um, here we go. Mm -hmm. This is a new piece I made here. Can you go a bit closer? I'm going to zoom in. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I layered my, um, like my, my particular paint recipe mm -hmm. and slightly different brushing. Can you go a bit more uh, to the zoom out? Interesting. The hearts match the color. I don't know if this is an Instagram algorithm. So and tell <laughs> us about your tell us about your uh, special recipe. Um, I was trying to reinvent sort of how I approach uh, painting altogether. You know, that was like maybe ten years ago. I started to question also what type of material I'm using. And um, can we see the other one as well? Yeah. And because um, I started to incorporate, let's say, m memories and um, imagination, at some point, I thought, you know, maybe I'm just bringing this closer to a kitchen recipe. And um, maybe just why not include material like Baking flour. Mm -hmm. um, so flour is meal, right? In German. Yeah, meal. Yeah, actually, which is a kind of a rare good right now, I guess. At least in Germany, it is. I don't know how it is in Mexico. Mm, no. It's, People uh, buy meal. Uh, they buy flour, <laughs> toilet paper. 
I don't know what else. So, and, and these are these like, is this like a, is this a head or is it a volcano? Which is I eroding? think it's, I think it's, a, I feel it's kind of both. It's probably a volcano uh, with a, you know, a plume, um, some kind of smoking volcano. Um, Mexico City, you can see volcanoes from mm -hmm. the distance. It's a country that has a lot of, um, you know, eruptions, uh, earthquakes. Is this the same country. color palette you're using when I look at this one here right now in the viewing room in Berlin and the one uh, you are having there in Mexico? Um, this one and maybe... Maybe this one has a little bit of, um, of the one you just showed me. Um, and, and this one as well, no? It's the same purple? No, this one, the large one you're showing, um, I, when I first got into the, um, this kind of flower recipe, I tried to avoid color at all cost and um, used kind of muted ugly colors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like ugly greens or um, beige yellows. Um, and then I got into the idea of using like colors that are maybe in an, in the negative of a color slide or you know like old fashioned copy paper so that's where the this kind of purple originated so this one is made with a big brush right and it's a bit like an abstracted letter not so much in this one but in the one we had it was called love is a typo right our exhibition yes that um that is in this series, this is from, this is four years ago. The one um, I'm looking at right now. Yes, I, um, the purple one, I think it's called The Merry Widow. Um, I thought of the painting. The title is The Merry Widow? Yes, The Merry Widow. And what's the one title we're looking at on your screen? Um, it doesn't have a title yet. And the other one? Uh, this one. Um, I think I call it, flo um, what was it, Cabe um, Cabeza de Coliflor, that was the title. Cabeza, Cabeza de Coliflor. Yeah, like a cauliflower head. The one downstairs, yours. Um, on your yes, screen. and the, yeah, one the one I'm you're at? showing is A loves L. Aha, uh -huh. because it's an A and an L? Somehow? It could be, exactly. Could be. So the series for which I made for you in uh, Berlin really was playing with the idea of um, letters that are kind of over lay, um, laid over each other. So you, um, you could kind of maybe decipher something, but maybe not. Um, Do you prefer, there was this funny comment, I think in some review, on your exhibition here at the at the gallery, uh, all mm -hmm. the paintings were on on brick walls, and someone commented that Van Gogh put his paintings up on a brick wall to check if they if they hold up. Which ah yeah yeah. Uh -huh. Which then later I thought, I mean the the white wall is and the white museum walls is kind of a new. I think that's like probably exists only since. I don't know, the 30s of last century? Mm -hmm. I guess Van Gogh had usually brick walls, I assume. I don't know. I'm not an art historian, but what do you like? How do you, what do you prefer your work on hanging on? This one? Or to make sure that I don't bump anything over? This one. <laughs> um, it looked really great on the brick wall. I, I usually don't hang my paintings on a brick wall. Um, but I, this time it really worked well. Um, I'm not sure smaller work would look good on a brick wall, but this size did uh, work very well. So in fact, this is three colors? You, you have a gradient? There's a gradient in the background, and then I layer two colors. One is, a, I believe, some kind of red, and one is this kind of light sky. Blue. And this one is one color only? This one, 
it's really just only one color. There's um, just different intensity and and right. So yeah. the, I guess this was the most reductive um, because the background is probably I probably painted it with white too, but it's just white. So the color would be um, the only color that is in that large painting is the this purplish um, brush. I I work. Um, Depending on the scale of the painting, I adjust the brushes. So this large one needs a very large brush. Mm -hmm. um, and I use, um, I basically have some kind of broom for this size. Specially made? I have them, I buy them in Berlin. There's a wonderful store, Farbenkaschka. They have connections to a um, a brush maker in Bavaria. That's where I get them. Blind ones? No. Um, I don't know. There was a there was a brush making department in my school. I mean, or like department, but there was like uh, massage and uh, Kopflechten and brushes. Um, yeah. And and tell me the the small ones. They they have. Um, do you have a special brush for them as well? The, the ones we looked at, the heads? Um, at some point, you know, in my kind of anti-approach to paint making as an artistic um, enterprise, I was mostly buying my material in um, hardware stores. So I got into these really simple, cheap, flat brushes. Um, yeah, this is a wonderful example of is one small flat brush but the one example uh, the one difference is you see the white gesture this longish gesture in the middle of the painting this one exactly mm -hmm. so this is um this is just my thumb you know i've kind of ah, cleared ah. out the surface um so this i add this new element um because this type of, let's say, it's like halfway between a calligraphy and maybe, you know, a bundle of grass, you know, like a representational painting. Mm -hmm. um, I had. Is this, you say this is grass, like Dura's grass, like. Yeah, yeah. That in a way I was thinking of something, you know, that is half between a kanji, a Japanese calligraphy, mm -hmm. and actually a representation. Okay, that makes that kind of leads from from this one. It, you you came arrived in the abstracted letters A and L, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 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 how I mean it it is fi some sort of an abstract figuration you're doing there with the heads, no? Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess that's um, I'm kind of jumping back and forth, but uh, Sorry, at some point early on I was um, you know. <laughs> Let's say I gave up on painting and I thought, since I can't do anything in front of the painting, I can maybe just approach the actual painting from the back. So what you, yeah, what you would see in these large gestures would just maybe be some kind of um, glue or, you know, um, uh, that is applied to the back of something. Um, like ah, a just a fixer on a tire or so. Exactly. That's very so, interesting. So, That's very interesting because also that we meet, we we had we had we talked to Ansem Reile earlier today, who, mm -hmm. who also um, has a series which which relates to that, but it's way more. It's not so into the calligraphy and 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 text, and and these mm -hmm. are three bodies of work. Do you work like in groups and in series? Yes. Um, yes. I I mean. How I, many more I, different I, ones? Um, I think these are the three. I um, no, no. There was another series which I explored uh, three, two, three years ago, which was in a show I made for Los Angeles, and those were more like gradient backgrounds with sort of a veil that is over it. I think you. Um, that was a body of work too. So no, what I want to say is I think um, I'm not aware at, 
at the beginning of a series that it becomes a series. Then now I look at like, let's say 10 years of working in this particular um, material and I see, you know, series that basically have developed. The, this small green one, um, I haven't done a lot. This is a very small series that has less than 10 paintings. This was in the London show, if I remember right, huh? Exactly. And yeah. um, I, like but I figured over there. it is one of, um, this series is a key to, um, I don't know to what, but it's certainly a key to the other uh, series I'm making. So you I think there's I, a chance we can walk over to your studio? Um, we can. I mean, I'm ho I should be able to. It's probably, it takes a couple of minutes. It's okay. In the meantime, why don't you tell us you were you were if if you can do both at the same time, uh, walk mm. and talk. You were a monk in a monastery, right? In a Buddhist monastery for for a couple of years. Um, monk is um, exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but you were like yes, uh, it's true. I uh, was actually um, I became frustrated with my you know early um, approaches to painting and I stopped painting and I um, get got into meditation to you know maybe sort out some deeper questions you know if I don't know what to paint maybe I don't know who I am or something mm -hmm. um, not that I if I, so when you may... come from you come from like more representational painting like you were you like um, uh... My first um, watercolor, um, which was of any value, was destroyed by my aunt, who was an uh, artist herself. She was a sculptor, and she looked at it, and she said, oh, this is really not so good. <laughs> and destroyed was, was, Well, I mean, verbally, you know, she really oh, made okay. me feel bad about it. I was probably 14, and I was, you know, I was, I was going to, you know, I was kind of artistic as, as a kid, too. But then all this didn't really work out, and then I was went into this extended um, meditation um, hiatus, maybe like ten years, basically. Mm -hmm. Not all of them in in a monastery, but I did, you know, monastic retreats, um, uh, and then I started painting again, but more uh, in a calligraphy. I was actually learning kanji, Japanese calligraphy, for a while. And, um, and then I realized the brush, I, uh, I really had a big affinity to the brush and, you know, mark making. Um, and I, when I moved to Paris, like it was in the mid-90s, I started to make some very small figurative paintings mm -hmm. for like five years. Um, I had shows there, um, but then that whole, you know, it went into a blank, a brick wall, a brick wall, the famous Again, brick there wall. There we go. <laughs> and I decided I needed to leave Paris um, and also maybe completely change my approach to painting. Um, and I mean, I jumped forward, but then in 2010, when I really established myself in New York, my whole practice changed. Um, and I found, it felt like I found um, something that I was looking for a long time. And I, I talked to a friend here yesterday and of course, some like an object you make or a painting you make, um, it needs to exist somehow on its own. And I think that's how I judge it. Um, so I guess I found that I found, I gave, no, they, they had some kind of autonomy. I don't know, it's a little abstract what I say. If I walk no, no. outside, Johan, it may completely cut the connection and then I'm not sure if. Uh, uh, yeah, let's try. If, Otherwise we reconnect in five minutes. You have Wi-Fi there? Uh, okay, um, there is a, that should work, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what, what do so, you prefer? It's a good idea. 
You know, if, 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 if it doesn't work, but then I hear there are so many questions. I try to answer the ones I can. Uh, uh, mm. Oh, yeah. Or maybe you can. Like, for example, who is the person on your little portrait? Um, well, I, of course, it's uh, in a way me. Um, I, at some point early on in this portrait series, I did uh, have, let's say, um, models. Um, friends of mine um, but this kind of um, archetypal form I came up with um, is sort of a metaphor um, for I guess you know existence my existence everybody's existence um, I was thinking two things one was you know the myth, uh, the Greek myth of the guy who has to roll the rock up the hill, Sisyphus, mm -hmm. as a as an eternal punishment. So maybe you know this kind of shape on that kind of triangle is the boulder, the rock. Uh, so it's there's that. The other one was I was thinking of this Greek philosopher Empedocles, who threw himself in the volcano, I think, in Sicily. <laughs> So there was the volcano image, I guess. So both of it, the stone. Answer the is, it's exactly, it's kind of, mm, it's not anybody in particular. But um, it, that's, I mean, that's also the deal with meditation, no? Sisyphus and like trying to achieve something you can't, you, you yeah, can't that's a good point. constantly challenge to. That's a good point, Johan. Uh, oh, thank you. I mean, <laughs> you seem to know your way around in meditation. <laughs> so you know what I think we should do? We should just, let's focus on these questions and we just do another session in your studio. What do, what do we see in your studio? Oh, good idea, yeah. What, what do we do? Um, what do we see in your studio so we know already? Um, not so much. I have just two heads that are ready and the rest, the last two weeks I had, um, I was basically preparing canvases. So okay, it's all, good. It's, perfect. It has all white then, then, so, okay, good, good, good. But then it, it's a good question here because um, somebody asks us. It's funny because I, I wouldn't ask this question, but I think it's a good question. How do you decide that a painting is ready to go? That's kind of a, a key question, right? I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's um, let's. And then also the, the question is here, mm, why, if you work fast, because I mean, it's, 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 it you, looks I, fast, I, it's not it looks, fast, but it's not it, fast at all, right? And it, it took, no. I, I, I had this idea once that we, we, we had this possibility invitation, and I was like, hey, can we do this like quick? And he said, what, are you crazy? I can't do that that quick. And, <laughs> and, and, um, because you really plan these paintings, right? You work them out first, and then you... You exactly. Do, yeah. um, I also part of the my approach is I um, I uh, what, do, what do you call it? I put them together. I put the stretches together. I prime the canvas. I I do everything myself. That's I think somehow important um, for you know um, making to, for approaching it as I mean I approach painting also as an object, not just as a you know painted surface. Um, the final, let's say the final gestural uh, layer, um, it doesn't take long, but, um, you know, it takes some planning, it takes some mental preparation. Um, the actual making, I find myself actually doing them really slow. It's like I'm in slow motion. So, because I cannot really, um, you can't shove the painting around forever. It, then it's overworked. It needs to be basically one shot. You can, you know, you have one hour to finish the last layer. Mm -hmm. Then um, what I also felt, it's oddly enough, when I painted, I realized I wasn't actually looking at it, what I was doing. Um, and I think I changed it. I actually look really closely to you know what's going on? I don't know. So you mean it? It 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 is also like a process of meditation. 
I think it is some kind of meditative space. Um, like if you don't look, I mean, it's like a... it's it's um, no, I, um, I I don't know. It's difficult to say for me. I also try to, you know, it feels like I also hide the process from to in front of me. I don't know how it's uh, makes me kind of think here of this uh, artist Peter Drea, you know, who 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 did this painting yes. over, you know, over and over again. The same glass paintings, I guess. It's I felt um, I felt familiar to um, to his work, and I I enjoyed, you know. Oh yeah, we went to his birthday before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just before yeah, he yeah. passed away. Yeah. Yeah. So let me see this. Uh, I have to go over here because the battery is running out. Um, there is another question. Oh yeah, this one is always a very good question. Uh, <laughs> which advice you got for young artists? Um. Well, don't uh, don't give up. Um, it feels like nowadays, often young artists come from art school, are very well connected, um, already are desperate to find some kind of, you know, marketable um, produce pro product, um, and they f forget that you know maybe you have to fail, um, and maybe you don't make it. By 35, maybe you really, um, you know, hit the gold mine when you're 45. So don't give up. Um, that would be my advice. Uh, why did you move to Mexico? That's um, um, a very good question. But I have been shifting cultures over the last 25 years. Um, you know, when I first when I lived in Paris, it was a complete new situation. I had to kind of, I saw myself as a German uh, person from the French perspective. When I moved from France to New York, again, you know, it's a whole different frame for um, a cultural maybe inspiration. 